Hello, my name is Tori, and today I am going to talk about the Gemma Doyle trilogy by Libba Bray. Alright, so the first book in this trilogy is A Great and Terrible Beauty, then Rebel Angels, then The Sweet Far Thing. My favorite thing about these books is the tone. They are set in Victorian London at a boarding school, and the main character is a girl discovering she has magical powers. Now these books just have a great vibe, a great feel. I started reading the first one many years ago when I was on vacation at a beach that was very dark and stormy all the time and it was perfect. I found this in a little rustic bookshop with um, wooden railings and it was the perfect place to buy this book. My hands down favorite thing about this series is the setting and just the way the environment comes to life. So while I really like the tone and settings of these books, I had some problems with them too. So I'm going to talk about all those things, so let's get started. So this series annoyed me a lot, and it was mostly because Gemma didn't feel like a very smart or well-developed character, she didn't make very good decisions, and she didn't feel like she belonged in her time period. I felt like she wouldn't have um, the feminist ideals she did if she had really grown up in this time period. She was put, This book was supposed to be empowering women and saying that for hundreds of years women have been reaching for their rights and we've been making all this progress and that's a nice thought but in reality it was not a feminist society in Victorian London. And the things that Gemma did would not have been approved of by anyone and would have been illegal a lot of the time. And if she really wanted to live her life the way that she did, then her only option, as I saw it, was for her to stay in the realms or move to another part of the world. And she ended up moving to America, so that makes sense that she would be doing that. But even America at that point in time was fairly misogynistic and it still seemed like she wouldn't have fit in well and like she wouldn't have developed these ideas being raised in this society so that was a little surprising to me. There were some things that were very drawn out. Gemma misusing the magic. She in You knew she was going to misuse it. You knew she was going to do all these frivolous things that was going to come back to haunt her and we spent a lot of time watching that and in the end it didn't really come back to haunt her and all she really learned was that the magic was impermanent and was basically just a very sophisticated illusion and that she couldn't rely on it but there were no consequences to her all those pages and pages of her misusing the magic it was just a little moral lesson she had to learn at the end and in the end everything worked out great for her except for Kartik and it just felt like if she was going to do all these stupid things and make these poor choices, then there should have been some kind of a consequence, or she should have learned something from them, or she could have just kept the magic and gone on making her stupid choices and it wouldn't really have changed anything and there was no reason for her not to do that. The magic doesn't seem to have any rules or structure to it. There are just kind of these powers that come to Gemma and go, and there's not really a whole lot guiding what she can or cannot do with them other than the plot when she's trying to use them. And probably the thing that annoyed me most about this whole series was that Gemma didn't make very smart decisions. She was supposed to be free thinking and spirited, but that often translated into reckless and not considering consequences. And sometimes, and these things always tended to work out for her in the end, and I could see that it was driving a lot of the plot, so once I resigned myself to the fact that Gemma was just going to do some stupid things and make some stupid decisions and trust some people she probably shouldn't, and that was what was going to drive the plot, then I enjoyed this story much more. But it just took me a while to kind of get into the feel of, it's okay, she's this doesn't have to make a lot of sense. She's not using logic to decide most things for her. Then um, I enjoyed this series much more. Another thing that really bothered me about this series was the friendship between the four girls. Now the way this developed was that Gemma was the one with the magical powers, so she was the one calling the shots in that sense. 
and Felicity was the most popular girl in school. She was the one who um, got to control things socially at Spence, and so she was the one who called the shots, basically. Um, Pippa was Felicity's best friend and kind of um, second in command, and Anne was the girl who Gemma felt sorry for. So the way it appeared to me was that Gemma and Anne were friends because they were both the most despised girls in the school, and Felicity and Pippa were friends because they were both the most popular girls in school, and the four of them were kind of brought together by the magic. And over time, their friendship did grow and become a bit stronger, but it was always very manipulative. It was always that Gemma had the magic, and the other girls were trying to get it from her. Her friendship with Anne seemed like it was based more on pity and bonding over the magic than about actual friendship. They didn't seem like they actually cared about each other that much. They were just both a part of each other's lives. And I don't believe that Felicity would ever have been friends with Gemma or Anne had it not been for the magic. And she did grow as a character and learn to value them and want to promote their friendship, but it was always very manipulative. And the only real friendship I ever saw in this was the friendship between Felicity and Pippa. They seemed like the only two people who actually cared about each other without a motive of their own. And then in the last book, it was revealed that this was because they were lovers. And that is absolutely fine. I think it's wonderful to have all different sexualities in books, and I think it's great to portray those. But this was not portrayed as a romantic relationship for the first two books. This was portrayed as a friendship and two girls who were seeking popularity and were friends who used each other a little bit but were still mostly friendly and who were interested in boys. It really caught me off guard when it was revealed that they were lovers in the last book because that I didn't really get that vibe from them at all. And they weren't we didn't get to see that part of their relationship until the very end of this book. And then it wasn't really developed or talked about. It was no one talked about why they had both dated men if they were bisexual or lesbian or how they felt. No one had talked about Felicity's abuse as a child and how that affected any of this. And it was just very interesting to me that I was kind of stuck in at the end. In the first book, um, P Felicity has a relationship with Ithel. She's caught making out with him, which could partly just be because he's forbidden and she wants to cause a scandal. And in this entire second book, Pippa is cr using her magical powers to create a knight in shining, shining armor to sweep her off her feet. And so we don't really know a lot about how their dynamic worked, about how their friendship worked, about how their romance worked, any of that. So I would have liked to see a little bit more of that and get to really see these two characters interact and see what dynamic they had. Another thing that bothered me was Gemma's relationship with Kartik. In the first one, it was your um, standard boy meets girl, boy and girl dislike each other, but for whatever reasons they're forced to work together and grow to like each other. That one followed the perfectly normal arc that seemed fine. In the second book, they grow to like each other more, there's some bickering and a romance develops, and that seemed great too. And by the end of this book, they had basically decided to become a couple, was how I understood it. They were going to be together, they liked each other, they both admitted it, and now they were going to be in each other's lives. The third book was strange. At the beginning, Kartik just vanished, then he showed up not wanting anything to do with Gemma. It was later revealed that was because he had made a pact with the members of, with, um, some of the members of the Order to tell them what was going on in Gemma's life, and so she just decided that was okay, that, um, you know, he was going to tell them this, and that's why he was going to stay away from her. That makes sense, I guess. And then they were together for a short period of time, and then he turned into a tree. And the whole thing just didn't feel super developed. They were never really got to be a couple at any point. It seemed very much bickering and confusion, and then they're instantly a couple and instantly committed to each other just so there's more of an emotional impact when he dies. 
or not really dies, but goes into the ether and stops existing as himself. And that bothered me. It didn't feel like a very genuine relationship. It didn't feel like the natural arc from what they had established in these two books. And so I had problems with that. Overall, I felt like this series had a lot of really good intent and it tried to send a lot of really good messages, but it didn't deliver those messages very well. It tried to send very feminist messages, but they didn't come across as very genuine or realistic. It tried to be supporting of LGBT characters, but then they weren't very fleshed out or talked about. They were just kind of thrown in as a side note. And so that didn't feel very realistic to me. It tried to talk about diversity and, um, you know, overcoming prejudices, but then it kind of forgot about that halfway through and brushed over it. Overall, I love the tones of these books. These are great books to read on a stormy, rainy day. If you're ever staying in a creepy old hotel or mansion, these are the books you want. These are great petticoats whisking down dark halls in the dead of night books. But they just don't make that much sense to me. They seem like they were very light and fun, and they tried to have a serious message, but that message just didn't come across. So overall, these are good, they're just not my favorites.